In this world of continuous transformation, mergers and acquisition represent a highly relevant lever for companies to grow or achieve innovation. Integrating another company, uh, merging with another company, or carving out parts of the business are a very complex and challenging process and pose challenges on the IT side of the company. And I believe that enterprise architects should play a crucial role in that process. Looking at the uh, statistics of M&A, M&A deals um, have been very steady over the last years and we've seen up to 50,000 deals happening um, per year with a, with a volume per year of 3 trillion um, US dollars. Um, 2020 uh, was a year where we saw the first time a decline in, in the deals and steel volume. Still, there were very interesting um, deals, for example, the Slack and, and Salesforce merger, which was clearly targeted towards uh, innovation and uh, the scope deal here. In our customer base, we've seen other deals happening as well. So, for example, um, the Otis uh, carve out uh, out of UTC, um, which happened at the beginning of 2020. Um, uh, another example is two uh, logistics company merging. Um, where the focus was clearly on, um, uh, on reducing uh, costs. So these are um, motivations um, and where, where we see that uh, the enterprise architecture teams were involved early on in the, uh, in the uh, due diligence or in the um, post-merger integration process and have added uh, great value to the projects. So let's take a look at the, the high-level um, definition of, of M&As and the main brackets uh, that we see. So the first one is a merger. That means that uh, two almost equal companies enter an agreement to unify um, under one umbrella. The second one uh, would be an acquisition where one larger business uh, acquires uh, a smaller one and takes control over the firm's uh, assets and uh, stocks. Uh, the last one here uh, to consider is a bit different. It's a carve out, so that means um, a large company uh, sells off or divests itself uh, from parts of the business, which are then continued um, in a separate company. Historically, companies pursue M&A activities to uh, capitalize on economies of scale. For example, they uh, may join forces uh, to capture a larger customer base or penetrate new region um, and take advantage of cost benefits and increase negotiation power um, towards vendors. However, in recent years, organizations uh, are now shifting towards uh, so-called scope deals. These are the ones that uh, actually add business capabilities um, or modernize operating models um, to grow revenue streams and to, to increase innovation. Um, the research shows that uh, M&A activity has been relatively steady uh, over the last few years. Um, in fact, in, in 2019, the percentage of uh, scope deals um, was up compared to, to this number in uh, 2015. So especially in, when you look at the, the tech industry, uh, where we see a lot of the, the, the deals happening, the scope deals increased from 50% in 2015 to 82% in 2019, based on a Bain analysis. However, with the pandemic in 2020, which is uh, obviously still uh, ongoing, the number of deals uh, dropped uh, significantly uh, across all industries. Um, and according to a research of, of the Deloitte M&A study, um, we, we see that 61% uh, of the executives believe that um, the M&A uh, deals will take up again uh, in this year, in 2021. With the numerous M&A activities um, happening across all industries, this poses major IT, uh, IT challenges on the uh, post-merger integration activities. Operations need to continue to run smoothly for all involved parties. Mm. Cost-saving pot uh, potential needs to be tapped quickly in order to avoid that uh, contracts get rene renewed and unnecessarily and um, money is wasted at, uh, at this stage. Um, we as Lina X need to provide an, uh, a solution to enterprise architects that helps them to, to quickly reach an overview because 
time count, counts and time matters. And um, to get here an, a quick overview on the joint IT landscape um, as part of the post-merger integration activities. And some of the, the top IT challenges that uh, we've seen um, that EAs encountered are, are actually uh, three. It's number one, um, the lack of visibility. It's number two, the lack of clarity uh, on the strategic direction of the deal. And it's number three, uh, the need for change management. So let me explain them. The lack of visibility. Um, this is when, at the beginning of the deals, there are no insights into the capabilities, um, the systems or the technologies that are uh, used in the, uh, in the other um, company. And obviously, then there is also no transparency about the, the combined entity. Um, there is no view at the beginning about the dependencies uh, between those systems. And uh, especially this dependency clearly defines the feasibility um, and the effort of integrating or separating two systems. So a very important factor when you uh, lay out the, uh, the future roadmap. The second point, lack of uh, clarity on the strategic direction. Um, there are various options uh, possible when uh, two companies uh, merge or uh, are integrated. It could be um, a best of both worlds approach um, where you look at the solutions of both companies and decide uh, for each capability or for each system which one you take. Or it could be the winner takes it all. That means you are clearly going um, with uh, the, the solutions and the capabilities of, um, of one company. Could also be that there are like decisions and standards uh, taken on, on vendors or on, on platforms that give you a, a clear direction for, uh, for every decision along the, uh, the, the post-merger process. And this it's, it's totally relevant to have this as early as possible at the hands of the, the people who plan the transformations. And these are the, the enterprise um, architects. The third point here, the need for change management. Um, what we've seen in, in the deals is that good people will leave the boat um, if they see no perspective for themselves uh, in the future organization. On the other hand, the, the enterprise architects, they require this expert knowledge um, of, the, of the good people um, and, um, and the, their support to make uh, good architecture decisions and to lay out the, the right plan for, this, uh, for the combined entity. And it's crucial to document this, this knowledge and all the decisions uh, that have been taken and, and their reasoning um, to avoid any, any brain drain. So even if people leave, that you still have the knowledge uh, in a codified uh, way um, and that you can, in the end, take good decisions on, uh, on the future IT landscape. And the last point to add here is, um, obviously there are a lot of people um, joining uh, the company at once, a lot of onboarding is happening. And this requires a proper change management and gives people motivation once they, they, they join and see that things are clearly documented, uh, that it's that everybody can understand the reasoning for decisions and uh, what, what has happened to directly uh, get productive uh, as early as possible as part of the post-merger uh, integration. I truly believe that the enterprise architects are, are, are at the heart of the IT work streams um, of the post-merger integration. In fact, we recently conducted a survey amongst our customer base and saw that 89% of our respondents are heavily involved in the post-merger integration process. 44% are involved in the earlier stages of the merger and acquisition projects as part of the due diligence phase, and 41% are involved with implementing the carvont. So there is a high involvement of enterprise architects in M&A deals, and this is this absolutely does not surprise me, because it's it's up to the to the enterprise architects to ensure a smooth transition. Um, or to, to make the, the carve-out uh, operational very fast. Um, and I see this; these are um, core activities and, and fit perfectly into the uh, enterprise architect's role. With the ACE role in uh, PMI activities, um, our survey also validated the, the top use cases um, for the enterprise architects um, in, in the M&A process. And um, it, the, the most uh, relevant part here is and most relevant use case is uh, creating a transparency 
for the as is landscape uh, for the combined entity. The second one is to do application rationalization and to realize cost savings as soon as possible, mostly with an objective to only have um, one uh, application per business capability and to keep the um, redundancy as low as possible. The third use case is the IT target landscape. Our customer respondent believe it's important to lay out the future state of their landscape. There is a strong need to use our platform to not only look at the IT landscape at one point in time, but also to do comparisons. What does the landscape look like today? And once the companies have merged, what will it look like three or five years to come? Our customers need to compare these times against each other and see what changes. The visibility of a target IT landscape leads to application roadmaps as another use case. Enterprise architects need to have a clear picture on when and what phase to deprecate their applications. Also important for respondents is coming up with a joint business capability model. Obviously, enterprise architects need to start with the development of a combined business capability map to help with the planning of the PMI strategy. Finally, our customers also saw the need for scenario integration. Nearly three quarters of the respondents said it was important to be able to develop different scenarios and plans for their integration activities. This is a very time sensitive phase where there's not a lot of time to think about five or six different scenarios. But we've also observed among our customers that this is also a very straightforward process. At Lina X, we have a best practice um, process for post merger integration. Um, and I think this helps to, to guide any um, customer through these uh, activities. First of all, it's about uh, developing a business capability map for the joint entity as a first step. Second would be to evaluate the current and future state uh, of the maturity of a business capability um, based on the, on the corporate strategy of the company. This is followed by uh, creating a 360 degree view of the application, including metrics such as the usage of an application um, uh, and as the, the, the cost of an application. And uh, of course, uh, also the, the, the business support. So that means uh, which business capabilities are supported by that application, um, which teams are actually using uh, an application, as well as um, an evaluation of a technical fit uh, or, or functional fit, business fit of an, of an application, which creates um, a, a good uh, basis for, for any uh, decisions and discussions. The fourth uh, step in, in our process would be to then define a way forward for each of the applications. Um, and a, a model that has been proven very valuable here um, is Gartner's time module, where um, for each of the applications and based on the 360 degree view, um, you then decide if you tolerate um, a certain application, if you invest in a certain application, if you migrate a certain application towards uh, another application or if you eliminate uh, a certain application. That means you get rid of it um, as, as soon as possible. And the last step there then is to, to build an uh, application roadmap from it. Um, if, even if you decide to eliminate uh, an application, for example, it's, it's uh, not clear that you can do this in the next week or month, but you are probably tied to contract. So you, this is something that you need to, to take into consideration or capturing, backing up the data and so on. These are all activities that then um, follow and need to be brought uh, to a roadmap. Although this is a, a very straightforward process, I see that um, sometimes there is a, a higher complexity in the, in the decisions and, and options that, uh, that our customers face. Um, and in those cases, it's, it's valuable to compare different uh, scenarios, um, for example, either going with platform A or with platform B, or to compare more aggressive timelines with more conservative timelines and see what the what the consequences of uh, such uh, scenarios are in, in terms of investment needed, uh, resources needed, um, and, and so on. Enterprise architects play a crucial role in the continuous transformation process of their companies. Mergers and acquisitions are just another trigger in the, in the transformation journeys 
um, of the companies. Um, and this needs a forward-looking enterprise architect in the driver's seat to really accelerate the pre-deal and post-deal activities which are related uh, to IT, IT. I believe EAs are really well positioned to understand the business motivation behind an M&A deal as well as the technical details of the capabilities, the applications and technologies that are involved in the deal. So I can only encourage um, the, the enterprise architects to be part of the uh, mergers and acquisition activ activities of the companies and to add value there.